Hi, welcome to the VR Cafe. What can I start you with? Yeah, I just got my new VR headset. Can I get the most immersive game that you've got? Of course, sir. Here's the chef special. This is disgusting. How do you think I could play a VR game without simulated arms? My apologies, sir. Let me get you something with arms. Ah, oh, yes, that's so much more immersive. I love, I love me some immersion. <clears throat> immersion. Okay, okay, hear me out before you hit send on that comment. I love VR as much as the next guy, but it's got some issues. If I were to get into all of them, we would be here all day, so I'm just gonna cover the most fundamental problem. And no, this video isn't gonna be, oh, the Quest 2 sucks, the Quest 2's ruining VR, because it really isn't entirely the Quest 2's fault. First, VR causes a whole bunch of problems for game developers, from navigating gameplay issues to motion sickness. Flat screen gaming has been the standard since the inception of video games themselves, and developers have had decades to get a good grasp on what is fun, and more importantly, what isn't. I argue that VR has really only been mainstream for maybe like five-ish years since the release of the Quest 2, and developers are still trying to understand the best way to use VR. Let's take a look at a first person shooter on a flat screen compared to in VR. If I played a first person shooter on a console, I'd expect there to be a button for reloading, a button for crouching, etc. This has been the standard for going on two decades. Then VR shows up and just wants to throw all of those conventions out the window. You'd figure that making a VR FPS would be just as easy as replicating real life firearm mechanics as accurately as possible. Nope, this is just where the nightmare begins. Here's how Boneworks handles guns. Come on. And here's how Half-Life Alex handles guns. Can you spot the difference? Boneworks and its successor Bone Lab aim for a more realistic approach to physics in VR. Your entire body is simulated as a physical object. Your gun collides with walls and it can lead to some fairly frustrating shit. Here's a gun stuck in a door. Here's a me stuck in a door. Is it realistic? I don't know, I only have a couple of rifles at home. With the real guns, you get feedback. I can feel when the mag is ready to be fully seated. In virtual reality though, I can't feel shit. Paired with the need for pinpoint precision when reloading, and these virtual guns are unnecessarily difficult and frustrating to use. Stuff like this is a side effect of a bigger issue in the VR industry. I present to you my most favorite marketing word of all, immersion. What exactly does immersion mean? According to VR developers, immersion means making your game as horrifically complex as possible in the hopes that it gets hardcore gamers hard? I'm sorry, do I play games to replicate my least favorite thing of all, the sad reality that we have to live in every day, or do I play video games to relax? Like I said earlier, there are few to no standards in VR game development, so while one VR game might have really fun shooting mechanics, another might have infuriating mechanics that are completely different. Guns are something that everybody understands. Here are three VR games that have guns in them. Boneworks here has the most realistic gun mechanics, Fallout 4 VR has the least realistic, and Half-Life Alex has a good compromise between the two. If I were to put these three in order of least fun to most fun, here's what it would look like. Boneworks is all the way here down at the end because it requires pinpoint precision to pull off a fast reload. Fallout 4 just reloads for you, and Half-Life Alex gives you a large margin of error in your reloads for the sake of making the game more fun. The reason why I say Half-Life Alex or Fallout are more fun is simply for the fact that I can use only 10% of my tiny little nugget brain to reload a gun, while reloading in Boneworks feels like it requires a PhD in gastroenterological surgery just to shoot an orange zombie guy in the balls. Valve are unbelievably smart when it comes to game design, and while they aren't known for yearly releases, they have a reputation for quality and innovation that has revolutionized gaming multiple times over. <laughs> Valve's genius with Half-Life Alex can be seen with the simple fact that you don't even need to bend over to pick up anything. Which if you're a VR gamer, you know the pain of punching your floor at least one time trying to grab something that you accidentally dropped. Let's take a closer look into how Valve designed Half-Life Alex to make it both fun and incredibly immersive. Every game that I've played and would consider great has a well thought out world. Notice that I didn't say realistic. I'm talking Nier Automata, Dark Souls, Dead Space. They all have a world that might not be realistic, but it's believable. The world in Half-Life Alyx isn't some groundbreaking, beautiful NVIDIA tech demo. The lighting is good enough. The textures are good enough. But what really matters is how Valve's team treated the world itself as a character. I think of Superhot as one of the best examples of storytelling with a world that isn't realistic whatsoever, but believable. VR developers have to find a way to integrate the player in the world to take advantage of immersion. Boneworks accomplishes this by making your entire body a physics object. This solution is realistic, but I would argue that it isn't very fun. Alex, on the other hand, does something that is a masterclass in VR world design. Small details in the world react to your presence, like this weird fungi stuff, I don't even know what to call it, but I know I don't want to touch it. 
Ooh, yeah, good boy. Ooh, yeah, good boy. With small details like this, Half-Life Alex sets itself apart from every other VR game that I've ever played. Now we move on to gameplay mechanics. Sticking with first-person shooters, let's look at some mechanics in closer detail. In most flat-screen FPS games, your gun doesn't collide with walls. Recently, however, we've witnessed the rise of FPS games with a focus on tactical realism. Games like Squad, Insurgency, and Tarkov. In these games, your gun length matters as moving the barrel close enough to a wall will make your character pick up their gun to avoid it unrealistically clipping into geometry. Contrary to what I'm about to say, these types of FPS games are my favorite on desktop. Systems like this work great on desktop and lead to a game that is both fun and more immersive. In VR though, it's a different story. If your gun isn't able to clip, it leads to tons of moments where your gun is just freaking out on the edge of a wall. When you play a tactical VR FPS game, you have to pay real attention to positioning, which can lead to more realistic tactics being used. But again, I would argue that it simply isn't fun. And based on the player counts of these games, I think most people would happen to agree. Valve realized the potential of this issue and decided to design all of Alex's weapons to be one-handed and relatively short, resulting in guns that handle very easily in tight spaces and allow them to be useful tools instead of anger-inducing boomsticks. Physicality. Physicality can be a great thing for you, but VR, and specifically first-person shooters, have a very big fundamental problem to deal with. Fun Fundamental. Say you're playing Fortnite and you're cracked like the saucy white boy you are, you can crank 90s on little kids with ease. All you have to do is flick your thumbstick or your mouse. Okay, but yeah, how do you do flick shots in VR? Oh yeah, that's right. This is a topic I've covered before, but both prospective VR owners and current VR owners need to know this. A VR headset is basically extra weight on your neck that isn't counterbalanced by anything else and it leads to a significant increase in hurting or breaking your neck just from playing a game. VR is already niche enough on its own, and I think making it as physical as possible just goes to make it less and less accessible for a wider audience. The next point, I really don't know what to call other than hype. It is time for a controversial opinion. Games like Ghosts of Tabor, Breachers, Population 1 don't really benefit at all from being in VR. They are essentially VR versions of games that are already incredibly popular on flat screen. If a game is just better on desktop, why not just release it on desktop? After the novelty of a game simply being in VR, VR wears off and people realize that these VR versions of these games don't have the content or depth of the desktop counterparts, the player base just dies. That being said, there are games that I think really benefit from being in VR. Both VRChat and Blade and & Sorcery make great use of full-body tracking, something that Bone Lab still ignores despite your body being physically simulated. Half-Life Alex utilizes the strongest aspects of VR and does things with gameplay and world design to negate VR's downfalls as best as it can, leading to a game so good that people are still trying to find a way to play it without VR. You might say, hey Boneless, those games are made by massive studios with tons of funding. I give you Sail VR. A quirky yet incredibly fun pirate simulator made by an incredibly small studio. The entire focus of this game is being a pirate and getting money to spend it on upgrades to get more money. Are the graphics realistic? Nah. But this developer understands how important a game being fun is. But when a company is designing a game first and not a VR experience, they usually focus on the right aspects of a game rather than treating VR as a gimmick. Many developers that I see would rather focus on stuff like physics or how they can integrate a social aspect into their competitive VR FPS game, or even worse yet, going for super ultra realism at the cost of making a game that is actually fun to play. If it isn't obvious yet, I hate 99% of AAA games that have come out in the past 5 years. There's simply too many battle passes and lazy collectible content strewn over empty open worlds for me to care about them anymore. The games that I find myself playing most often are games that keep it simple. Super hot, for example again. The entire premise of this game is just shooting stuff, and the faster you move, the faster they move. We all know that mainstream gaming is lacking heavily in originality, and it sucks to see VR get sucked into it too. Especially with content creators who are paid to hype up games that have no real redeeming qualities other than it simply being on VR. I quit making videos talking about new releases and industry news entirely. And that's not hate for those who make those types of videos, but I really struggle to find VR titles or news in general that I feel is legitimate worth talking about. Everyone has their own preferences for games that they enjoy playing, and you're fully entitled to that. Maybe I'm just not into these types of games as much as other people are, and more power to you if you do enjoy that type of game. It just isn't fun for me and statistically most of us. To give some actionable advice to the industry as a whole, VR gamers are dying for fun games. 
Make your game fun first, and then make it realistic as you see fit. We keep getting games that try to be clones of games that are already so much better on a flat screen. I'd love to see game developers take more risks with VR instead of playing it safe by remaking games that we've already seen over and over again. I am waiting for the day that someone really understands the potential of VR and releases a game with a visual style that we've never seen before, with experimental music, fun gameplay mechanics, and it completely changes the narrative around VR.